Welcome back to another episode of Hustle is for Life Motivation. I know that you're super excited just the way I am because with each episode, I come here to provide value to you, to serve you guys. And my goal, as always, is to bring on amazing guests from all domains of life to try and show you what's really, truly possible for you. Now, these guys that I bring on, they're very special to me. Okay, each and every single guest that I bring on, they're very special to me because I have taken the time to invest in that relationship, to build that relationship. And that's something really important I want you guys to understand as well as the audience, that when I bring somebody on, I'm not just holding the reins and say, okay, this is my guest, my network. No, at the end, we talk about how you can connect with them. And, you know, I, I don't hold anything back. I want you guys to reach out. I want you guys to connect with these really successful high-level people so you can start to accelerate your life by becoming the best version version of yourself. And that only requires you to go ahead and take action. I'm big on taking action. You know it. I always challenge you. And this is not going to be any different. Okay. In this show, we've got an amazing guest with us. He is a podcast extraordinaire. He is an international speaker, a podcasting consultant, and he helps entrepreneurs and marketers plan, launch, and leverage podcasts as a business asset. And he works with podcasters in growing, marketing, and monetizing their shows. And the cool thing is he himself has four different podcasts that he actually hosts. All right. So we're talking to somebody who really knows a lot about podcasting. He's not afraid to actually go ahead, try different things, experiment with different things, and then share the results. He's very open, very giving, very transparent, very vulnerable. Everything that we believe in here at Hustle is for Life. So he is just like the perfect fit to to come on as a guest. Now, also the fact that he's the founder of the world's largest podcasting virtual summit. It's called the Podcast Success Summit. And he is also the creator of what Forbes, Forbes dubbed podcast community to join the podcast growth mastermind. So if you're somebody who has a podcast, you're thinking about a podcast, you're maybe just kind of not sure what to do because you want to take your business to the next level and you really want to add value to other people and add value to your audience, you're not really sure what to do. Well, this episode hopefully will help you realize that podcasting is a great way to grow your business, to gain credibility and to also build a very strong profile. And to be honest with you, it's also a fantastic networking tool. And we can talk about it a little bit during this show. Yan has actually been featured on Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, Huffington Post, Founder, and Fox News. He is the real deal, people. Please help me welcome Yan Ilunga to the show. Yan, welcome to Hustle is for Life. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Talal, you got me fired the intro and the energy. I'm <laughs> pumped to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, my brother. You're welcome. To be honest with you, it's just amazing. We connected, uh, you know, on, on LinkedIn and uh, I, I saw your profile. You're doing so many amazing stuff. We have some kind of like mutual connections as well. And straight away, I was like, you know what? I need to reach out to Yan. Um, and uh, very kindly, you accepted. And here we are. We're recording this thing. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> awesome, man. So we want to start by you guiding us and taking us back in time. Okay, we're going to assume we're in a virtual time machine. You're going to take us back in time and you're going to maybe tell us a little bit about your journey, a little bit about your story and how you actually got started on this amazing journey on becoming the podcast extraordinaire. So once upon a time, no, just kidding. <laughs> In so to kind of go back far, in time, yeah, sorry, go <laughs> to go back in time, but try not to take too long. Yeah. So I'm originally from the Italian speaking part of Switzerland. That's why I have this funny macaroni accent. And in terms of my education, the educational side of my journey, I have a bachelor and a master's degree. And my major was communication. So wow. that's what I specialized in. And then in terms of my work life or my real work, so to say, it was as a journalist. So I, I'm originally from Switzerland, but I've been based in Helsinki, Finland for a few years. Right. I did my master's here. I worked here for a journal, uh, for a newspaper, sorry, journal is Italian, for a newspaper <laughs> called Helsinki Times. 
And then I started to do things online. I started to develop some websites. I started to help some people with the marketing side of things. First, some musicians that they knew because in Switzerland, I worked at a music festival called wow. Jazz Ascona for a few years. And because I spoke different languages, I got to do several things. So I got to do video interviews, translations on radios, radio interviews, uh, newspaper article interviews. So I really got to network and I started to help those people with the marketing. And then I started to say to myself, it would be interesting to do my own thing. And yeah. I was really thinking what that own thing would be. And one day I was studying for, for I think I was writing an essay or something. And I'm really a person who could literally wake up wearing headphones and fall asleep listening to music or <laughs> podcasts. I can literally do that. No jokes. Awesome. But probably for the first time in my life, I wanted to take a break from music, but I still wanted to listen some, to something. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I wonder what. I did a, a random Google search and I came across this thing called podcasts. I had no idea what a podcast was like. Nothing. Yeah. I just looked at what Google recommended. I was like, well, I've got to trust Google on this one. And I downloaded the podcast. I downloaded the app or actually I noticed, oh, okay, I have this app on my smartphone already. Great. Listen to the, to the podcast. I was like, this is fantastic. I really like the person that was being interviewed whose name is Pat Flynn. Yeah. I liked his style, mm. liked his story. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start to listen to what he does. I started to listen to his show, a bunch of other podcasts. And I said to myself, well, this would be such a cool thing to do. Mm. But I had uh, the problem of where to start. What, what should, I could talk about so many different things, but what should I focus on and where can I already have some help with? And then I remember my experience and the network I built working at the jazz festival. And I said, hey, why don't I start a podcast that talks about jazz and music business so i get to interview people that are already in my network and yeah. i can use that then reach out to people who aren't in my network and i started with the the first podcast the jazz spotlight it was fantastic but then i realized that the more i was consuming podcasts the more i would find myself listening to entrepreneurial podcasts digital marketing podcasts and i was fascinated by those people but i couldn't really bring a pat flynn on a mm. music business podcast. Yeah. So yeah. that's where my second show, The 360 Entrepreneur, was born. So it's an, it was because it's over now, 230 episodes, wow. interviews with entrepreneurs, New York Times bestselling authors. So mm. that podcast, I really leverage it as a networking tool. Mm. And on the meantime, as I was doing things as a, if you want, as a freelancer, I was working at the newspaper, I was doing some things on the side. I started to get a, a, a questions from people, podcasting related questions right. about almost anything from the equipment to how did you get this guest? Because I always say I'm a, I'm a regular guy, but through my podcasts, I've interviewed Grammy Award winning artists, New York Times bestselling authors, top entrepreneurs. So people would ask me, Jan, how did you interview this person? How did mm. you interview that person? And I started yeah. to share the things. And then I said to myself, one day I stopped and said, Maybe I should, instead of keep answering emails kind of on the side, I should really focus on podcasting 100% from start to finish. So that's when I kind of um, I flipped the switch and I focused on podcasting. And now fast forward a couple of years, I focus on podcasting at 360 degrees. So I'm a podcasting consultant. I work with people who have podcasts. I work with people who are interested in having podcasts. Mm. I'm a podcast guest. I have my own podcast on podcasting where I do experiments. As you hinted in the in the intro, I do experiments. I have sound effects. I, I have a different format than, than what it's out there. So this is my, my journey kind of from the reverse engineering, the steps I took really. Awesome. Awesome. And, and that, that sounds like an amazing journey that you've been on, on just constantly, you know, growing yourself. The cool thing is I, it, it, what it seems like you found your passion, your one thing in life, which was podcasting. And then you just went all in. You just started to look into podcasts, listen to podcasts, start creating podcasts, start building podcasts. Like you went all in. And that I love that. I absolutely love that. For the yeah. audience right now, I ask you guys, what's your one thing? If you haven't found your one thing, then your one thing should be to find your one thing. 
And Yan found his passion. He went all in and look how much amazing success he's had. He's talking about running different podcasts. He's, you know, interviewed some really, really successful people in the world from different domains, different fields. And it's it's fantastic. The, the thing that he's created where he's actually helping other people grow their podcasts and show them how they can monetize, etc. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry on, Talal, yeah. may I add one thing to what you said? Yeah, of course. I think it's also important for people to keep in mind that... I I agree with you 100%, and it, I think it's important for people to keep in mind that it's it's a journey, mm. and the the one thing number one may take some time to actually find it. For example, for me, as I said, it's not that I woke up one day and I was like, "This is what I'm gonna do." I did different things, and also podcasts. For example, why did I decide to wrap up the Three Six Entrepreneur after 230 uh, episodes? Because I wanted to narrow down even more on podcasting. Mm. So I said, okay, that's that's not helping me anymore in a way that the, the podcast as a platform served its purpose because I used it as a networking uh, asset. I built yeah. an audience, which is great, but I really wanted to, to laser in on podcasting. And also I would say to keep in mind that the one thing can also change with time. So maybe now one finds an interest in, in something and then maybe five years from now, that interest may shift a little bit. I think that's who we are as people. So I think that it's important, as you said, to find the one thing, but also to keep in mind that, number one, it may take some time to get to the one thing, and it's okay. I think we have to remember that it's, it's a journey. I always think about it as a journey, and you use the word journey yourself, Talal. Yeah. I think it's important to keep in mind that a journey isn't always straight from point A to point B. Sometimes mm. it takes us around, we go through ups and downs, but at the end of the day, we get there. So remember, folks, it's also about enjoying the journey. Even if you're perhaps having a hard time right now, remember, ups and downs, highs and lows are part of the journey. Mm, yeah, very, very powerful. And again, you know, what you shared there is absolutely true. And people, I think, really need to listen to that carefully. The fact that you don't, you're on a journey, there are going to be highs and lows. But it's your job to enjoy the journey as you go along, both the highs and the lows. Because guess what? The highs are obviously going to be highs. Fantastic. But with the lows, you're going to learn something. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. That's fantastic. And this is obviously coming from somebody, folks, who's gone through a journey himself where he has created extraordinary results in his life. So whatever he's sharing with us right now is going to be absolute gold. So I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, yeah, the awesome thing is that you really kind of went into this uh, niche or niche of podcasts, right? And at the moment, you're helping other people grow their podcast. Uh, you're telling them how to monetize podcasts, etc. I guess for somebody out there who's passionate, who's hungry, who is kind of listening to this right now, and they're wondering, well, I'm a in a place in my life, in my business, where I want to take it to the next level. I'm not really sure which way to go, but I am stuck where I am, so I can't stay here. What What do you think is the right solution for them? I mean, should they be looking at starting a podcast? Will, do you think that's a good like tool to grow their business, to actually build a profile, to gain more credibility, to actually build a network? Yeah, that's a great question, Talal. I think, I think it's a question that we should all ask ourselves. Even even people who you may have people you look up to, but mm. even those those people should ask themselves their question. At least in my opinion, it doesn't matter how big or or small they may be in your eyes. Uh, having said that, I think that the the answer to your question may vary from person to person. Mm. However, I think that. Podcasting, obviously, I love podcasting, but having said that, I would say that, that podcasting isn't necessarily a solution for everybody. First of all, it's not a silver bullet. I don't believe in silver bullets, yeah. but I think it depends. Perhaps doing something like you're doing, Tal, with video may be better. I know some people who love being in front of a mic, but hate being in front of a camera. I yeah. know people who absolutely hate using their voice but they're great at using let's say visual content perhaps instagram or something like that mm. but what i would say is regardless of uh, the medium you go for to create content because i think that content is very powerful i would in encourage you to think of a medium 
a way of creating content that allows you to interact with people, mm. whether it's interviews on a, on a podcast, on a video show like we're doing right now, yeah. whether it's doing collaborative webinars, whether it's doing a cross promotion on Instagram. And the reason for that is the more exposed you are to other people, and I'm not talking about only as a content consumer, because otherwise you can simply go on your favorite website and just consume content there. Yeah. But the more exposed you are as an active participant, whether you are the host, the co-host, the guest, the the more fired up you're going to be, number one, and the more receptive you're going to you're gonna be. So, for example, if you are let's say a podcast host and you yeah. interview guests about a specific niche, mm. you may start to identify trends that you're like, oh, okay, I've never thought about it, about this specific thing, but I noticed Talal mentioned it. Mm. It's interesting. And then you see that another guest mentions it, third person, fourth person, fifth person. At some point you're like, you know what? I, I should give that a try for my own business. Yeah. So I would say the best, if you're feeling stuck, I would say again, remember it's, it's a journey. It, it's, it's normal for everybody. Yeah. We all have have had ideas, launches that went bad, created content we thought was going to be a, a, you know, a fantastic piece of content and it was basically a total bust. <laughs> so remember, it's, yeah. it's part of the journey. Yeah. And I would say really think of what your strengths are. Hmm. So if you, if you hate your voice, I'm not saying that I love my voice, but I just came to the realization that you know I, there is really not much I can do about my voice about my funny accent, but guess what? If your accent or the way you look or whatever, it's something that is stopping you from doing something you're thinking about doing, you're, you're doing yourself a big, big, big defavor. And the reason mm -hmm. for that is uh, with the podcasts and summit combined, I think I've done over 300 interviews and I'm yet to come across a person who criticizes my accent who criticizes me because I make mistakes because English is not my mother tongue and yeah. mind you I've interviewed people who would have had every right to say that because they won Grammy Awards because they were published here and there not a single person criticized me actually I'm the first who make fun of it so that what could be seen as a flaw it's something that people love because whenever I say I have a funny Macron accent I'm from Switzerland people say ah oh, Switzerland you know I've been there or, or, or I've always wanted to go there, blah, 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 and we immediately strike a connection. So yeah. doesn't yeah. matter whether you go for podcasts, mm. you go for video, you go for whatever, just try to do something that is inclusive, where you are in charge, you are always in charge, because you are the captain, but yeah. also make people part of it, so that you can, you are really exposed by, uh, you're exposed to different people, and you're going to be able to pick up and all you need is one good idea, one spark that really fires up, you know, something in you and you're like, I'm going to go for this thing and yeah. it can be podcasting. It can be something else. Yeah, I love it. And that's, that's fantastic advice. You know, really, really amazing, you know, share there again. So thank you for that, Jan. But you bet. Yeah. But there's there's also the people who jump into something without figuring everything out. So. I know, for example, I, I, I do my show and uh, you, you run multiple podcasts, so you, you know this quite well. It's very time consuming, right? To set the whole thing up, to do the networking, to try and connect with the guests, to build a relationship, to then get them to agree to come onto the show. And sometimes they cancel. Sometimes you have to reschedule. What's your backup? You know, once you finish the show, then it's all the editing and, you know, trying to do the SEO and learning of new techniques and, you know, make sure you're, you're staying on top, et cetera, et cetera. So it is really time consuming. And that time, you know, could be used to work on the business. So, what I'm really getting at is like for people, you know, they need to have real realistic expectations about what it really takes to start a podcast as well. So maybe can you go down a little bit there about what it, what are the real expectations that people should have when they are thinking about starting a podcast? Because it looks really easy, right? You just jump on there, you do an interview, it looks great, fantastic, some awesome content, you're super energized, super hyped up afterwards. But behind the scenes, what is it really like to start a podcast? 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's fa another fantastic question on your on, on your part, Hal. And I think first of all, a podcast is not a business. Mm -hmm. And I, I and I say this because I have my own community. I'm part of several uh, podcasting related communities, and I see people who think that well, I'm just gonna start a podcast and I'm gonna get millions of downloads. I'm gonna get <laughs> sponsors. I'm gonna become a millionaire. And yeah. guess what? That doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Every single person who has an engaged audience and a loyal customer base, mm. whether it's via YouTube, via blogs, with books, by speaking at events, with podcasts, they will tell you it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of hard work, it takes yeah. a lot of kicks, uh, you know, between your legs if you're a man or <laughs> in your gut if you're a woman, but that's, that's for the reality to it. Yeah. There is no escaping. And I like the fact that you said that some people jump into things without having figured everything out. Mm. And I think that's the, that's, you know, I think it's good to have some ideas in terms of the basics, but then you should really go for it and, and you will learn with your, you know, with your experience. There isn't the best way to learn how to do something is to actually do it. And with podcasts, I think that some people often say, well, I'm just going to wait and, uh, you know, I want to practice how to speak in front of a microphone, blah, blah, blah. And the problem with that is the longer you wait with something like podcasting, for example, yeah. which isn't a as saturated as the blogging space, for example, the longer you wait, the later you're going to be to the party. Because if you have been checking podcasting over the last couple of years, mm. I remember when I when my very first show was in You Are Not Worthy, the, the section of iTunes for new podcasts, the podcasts that were around me for, were from people like you and I, basically. Mm. But now you see all the media companies, you see Hollywood actors who start podcasts. Yeah. What does that mean for you? Is that your mindset, your production value, your, I would say, uh, ethical approach to podcasting mm. has to be top notch because now you're not competing with independent podcasters anymore or only with them. You're also, uh, quote unquote, facing big companies who have been who have years of experience with radio, TV, broadcast, marketing, and all these kind of things. Yeah, I don't want yeah. to say that to pop by reality. Now, to really answer your question in terms of uh, adding podcasting to what one does, or this, the same thing I think can be said for video, for, for blogging. Yeah. But what mm -hmm. I would say is what I found out that really works well. And again, I don't spend my my whole day in front of a microphone. I, I wish, but that's not the case <laughs> is to really create systems. Systems, mm -hmm. I know, are a bit of a sexy term, but they can re really be helpful big time. So, for example, for me, what I do with my podcast, the podcast lab, and I have a lot of production in there because I have snippets from different people. I have sound bites and special effects. So yeah. the, compared to the other podcasts, the the production work, it's it's insane. And I'm not, not saying it in a good way, but it's, it's just a fact. It's because I know that it's not enough anymore, at least for me mm. in the podcast space to simply, you know, say whatever. I, I want to really take it up a notch. But that also means more time. That's yeah. why now I really have created systems. So for example, something I've done now for a year or so that works like a charm is for brainstorming, instead of thinking, well, okay, I'm going to try to think about a topic for today and then next week for next week and so forth. I have one brainstorming uh, session a quarter mm. and I make it super productive. So I, I, I carve out a window of time, whether it's an hour, a couple of hours, and I go about it, boom, 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 boom. So I just think about topic ideas, just write that down. I'm a yeah. big fan of Trello. Are you familiar Tal, with Trello? I've heard of it before. I'm not using it at the moment, but I have heard of it, yes. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I I I, I actually it's yesterday that, I, that, I, that I've had a Trello account since 2013, but right. I've been using it for the last two years because I started with it. I didn't like it, didn't understand what the big hype was. Mm. But yeah, going back, brainstorming for me has been fantastic and doing it in very specific uh, windows of time. So I say, OK, this is the brainstorming. And the way I go about it is I'm not trying when I think about a topic for an episode. I'm not trying to think about every single nuances. I think mm -hmm. about, okay, this is the topic. Tuck, 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 tuck. And maybe in 30 minutes, I come up with content ideas for the next quarter or yeah. two months. Mm -hmm. And then 
so that's my first level brainstorming. And then when I prepare for the episode, I make the bullet points. If there is, let's say, case studies I want you ma- to mention or things like that, yeah. I add them in Trello. But the brainstorming has been powerful. Systemizing other aspects of podcasting is also been very helpful. So, for example, realizing that there are certain things that you do that you think take, let's say, 10 minutes. Yeah. And you say, well, I just spent 10 minutes. And then when you actually do them, you find yourself having it, having spent 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Yeah. So for me now, I have a very systematic approach to, to things. Mm-hmm. For example, now I don't do interviews as a host anymore. But if I were still doing interviews, one thing I would do is, okay, I spend, let's say, an hour a week that I dedicate on researching guests, preparing my pitch, send the email to them. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, well, I pitch Talal today, Pat Flynn tomorrow. No, I spend my time. I'm really purposeful in the way I spend my time. I think mm. that being, and I know it sounds weird because I, I was talking to a friend or a fellow masterminder who told me, yeah, even showed me that she blocks out everything in her Google calendar, even free time. I was like, why would one add <laughs> free time slots? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But actually it does because now she, or in my case, I am not spending any time anymore or wasting it on things that you think take 10 minutes, but you end up spending 20 minutes. So the, my best advice for doing almost anything really, because it could, the same thing could be said for crafting emails for your community or managing your Facebook group, it's be systematic, be very specific, so that then you, you're gonna see that you have actually a lot of time. But the fact is that you're kind of, doing things as they come your way and then you find yourself feeling very overwhelmed and you have to do this thing and you have to do that thing and we all have done that but if you want to be able to do several things yeah without stressing out yourself Mm. then using systems is the key and mind you if you want to be somebody who podcasts or who have shows or whatever you're going to be doing several things because you're going to be in front of a microphone. You're going to be in touch with the community. Once you have an audience, you're going to be replying to emails, at least when you start out. So even if you think, well, I'm not going to be doing all anything but one thing, that's not going to be the case. Yeah, 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 very true. And, you know, I, what, what I love is the fact that you broke it down. You went into a lot of detail. You absolutely dug deep. I mean, that was, I, I just love the answer. That was just so cool. You went into a lot of detail and really added value because, you know, you, you just opened the book for everybody to have a look inside and say, look, this is what it takes. This is what it's really like. I love it. I absolutely love it. Actually, you know, Talal, one thing I forgot to mention that I should have said that for sure. me has been, has been a bit difficult, mm. but once I finished the transition, transition was really powerful is we all love tools Mm. tools for you know managing any aspects of what we do online yeah but i think that the key should be to to try to move toward one tool if possible i'll make a practical example what i was doing for my podcast Mm -hmm. it was i would brainstorm my ideas in trello okay i would use trello yeah then i would do the research i would use my i would use my email then i would use uh, pages or word mm. for the bullet points for the interview. Right. Then I would use another. So I would find myself having pieces of content or information here and there. Mm. So then I always had to copy and paste or oh, where, where was the word doc? Now what I do is I have Trello and I use it for everything. So I do the brainstorming there, my bullet points or questions for interviews. Everything is there. Show notes are there so that I don't have to guess. That's also the thing. With the systems, you take the guesswork out of it. You just know, okay, Trello, I go, tuck, tuck, take what I need, put it where it needs to be put, and it saves me some time. Nice, nice. Yeah, and again, fantastic advice on productivity, on how you can, you know, save time and and just group things together in one place so you don't have to go everywhere and and try and remember where I put this and where did that go. Like, it's all in one place. I love that. Excellent advice on productivity. And and definitely, I think people, you know, if you're here right now and you are intrigued by what Trello is, then go check it out. You know, can't do any harm, right? So (laughs) go check it out. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's free to, actually, it's free to use. So definitely worth using or checking out at least. Wicked. I'll, I'll be checking it out for sure because I've heard of it, but I haven't used it yet, but I'll definitely be checking out. Awesome. So, yeah, my next question really uh, is about monetizing because people who start 
a podcast or thinking about starting a podcast, there obviously goes a lot of time and money into, you know, building this thing up and you have to build this up over time. So, you know, it all adds up eventually. And the question that's niggling at everybody at the back of everybody's mind is really, well, can you monetize podcasts? And if you can monetize podcasts, then how do you monetize podcasts? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think many people make the mistake, as I was saying early on, that they think, mm. well, I'm just going to be the next Jolly Dumas or the next Pat Flynn. And for me, what I find fascinating, but also a bit sad, is that oftentimes people or even clients I work with enter the podcasting space with the mindset of, okay, I want to boost the downloads, get as many downloads as possible so that then I can land a sponsor. Mm. When maybe those are people who run businesses and they have, have products and who could actually be incorporated in the podcast and they could even make more money at the end of the day than actually add ads. So I think it's important for people to realize that different port, uh, different podcasters monetize their podcast in different ways and there are different ways and different levels of monetization. First mm. of all, there is direct monetization and indirect monetization. So if the content you produce is evergreen, keep in mind that if you mention something right now, you may think, oh, well, it's, you know, it's okay. No, somebody may find out about it two weeks from now, two months from now, two years from now. Just today, I listened to to a, a couple of podcasts and I was like, oh, I wonder when they published this. And I noticed they were like at the end of 2015 oh, and wow. the other one in mid-2016. Mm. And, you know, I'm not the only one who consumes podcasts like that. Yeah. So first of all, it's important to remember that there is direct monetization, which happens in a shorter window of time since you published the episode. And yeah. there is a, um, a, an indirect form, a long-term form of monetization. So to give you a few a few ideas to, to think about this, first of all, if you have a business and you have products, services, you do consulting, you're a coach, you're an author, whatever, my best advice would be, instead of trying to focus on something you have no control over, mm. which is and sponsors, because you can't really force people to listen to your podcast, what you can do is focus on what you already have in-house and think how you can incorporate them in the show. And I'm right. not saying that you should do a show that it's promotional all the time. Mm. But for example, I'll give you a, a very good example. Okay. A friend of mine, Jessica Rhodes, she's the founder of Interview Valet, which is a company that brings together podcast hosts and podcast guests for interviews. So they, they help people be featured on podcasts. Well, guess what? A section of the podcast, what they would do is they would interview some of their clients. Why is that a great? Mm. It's not that they would say, oh, well, I love interview connections, blah, blah, blah. They, they don't toot their own horn. What they do is they bring in a, a, a client who is an expert at something. They discuss the, the specific topic, let's say Facebook ads or whatever. Yeah. And then they may ask, so, and what do you think about, you know, podcasting and blah, blah, blah. And they give their insights. And guess what? As a, as a listener, you hear success story one time, two time, three time. At some point, you're like, oh, I want to work with them as well. Because mm. people who have worked with them are successful. Yeah, so you yeah. can do the same. So you can do the same. Nobody says you can do the same. It takes a bit of strategy to how to implement your products and services into your podcast. So I think that's the first thing. It's important to look at what you already have mm. and you already have control over. If you don't have anything to sell, that's okay. There are still ways you can monetize. One can be affiliate marketing. So if you have started online, there may be tools you're using. I mentioned Trello. Just look at the list of tools you're using on a regular basis yeah. and think of huh, which ones am I a big fan of? Not only mm. because they help me, but that I would be happy to, to mention to my friends, to people who tune in. Perhaps you're already doing that. Well, guess what? Many companies, many tools have what is called an affiliate marketing program or ambassador program or partner program yeah. where basically they give you a special link that you can use when promoting them. And if somebody decides to buy or sign up for the tool through your link, you get a commission. Can be 10%, 50%, it varies. But basically, if you start doing that, you can start monetize and not only for podcasts, but really any type of content Mm. Even if you don't have any product or any 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 service, and in fact, I know people who are really big in affiliate marketing, and that's what they really focus on. So 
they focus on identifying specific products or services they like, they're interested in, yeah. their audience likes and is interested in, and that's what they covered. So affiliate marketing can be an option. Another option could be if you have an audience, you could rely on the audience, ask for for an audience contribution. Think of something like Patreon, for example. You yeah. can you mm. can you can think about that. And I think one thing I would add when it comes to monetization is many people make the mistake of thinking basically wanting to go from zero to a hundred. Yeah. But I think that it's important to think about it in stages. For example, what I would encourage people to do, and I say the same to my clients really, is this start to make a list of what your podcasting related expenses are. What is it that you have every month, if there is any? Yeah. Think of media hosting, if somebody records at a studio, all those kind of things. Yeah. And then say, okay, now my goal is to cover one third of those expenses. You start with that. Once you you hit that goal, you say, okay, I want to cover half of those expenses. Yeah. Then you say, you know, I want to cover three-fourths. And then at some point, you will cover all of them and more. I think it's important because I think many people think that and also try to go from zero to 100, whereas it's really about, you know, taking the steps little by little. So I would say think of what you already have that you can use. I'm not saying that uh, – Relying on advertisers is a bad thing, absolutely not. But especially if you're starting out, it's very, very difficult to rely on advertisers. And also keep in mind that if you're really interested in having advertisers, you don't end up, you don't have to necessarily look for, for very big companies. Perhaps mm. there are some small businesses in your city, in your area that may be interested in being on podcasts. So keep that in mind as well, that there may be some companies that simply don't know about you, but you can reach out and some people are going to tell you yeah, uh, no, but some people are going to tell you yes. And sometimes one yes is all you need really to change things around. Yes. Yes. Again, absolutely amazing advice. And for people, you know, in the audience, I think whatever Jan said there is so practical and it really breaks down for you everything that you need to know for in terms of monetization, right? And the great thing is Jan talked about leverage what you already have, right? You don't have to go outside. You can just leverage what you've already got, whether that's your clients, whether that's your products, whether that's your services, whatever you've got, just leverage that. And some amazing strategies that you sh shared there, Jan, really appreciate it. And I think it added a lot of value to people and maybe clarified a lot of the things that they've been thinking about in the back of their head about what do you do? If I do start a podcast, can I monetize it? How do I monetize it? I think that was phenomenal. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. And just a reminder for people, as I said early on, anybody who has built a, uh, an audience, an engaged one, will tell you it takes time. So don't mm -hmm. expect. Sometimes it makes me laugh when I see some people who say, well, I've been podcasting for two months. I'm not getting any results. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know that there is people who have been blogging for like 10, 12 mm -hmm. years or something like that. So Two months are, are nothing and one has to really be in it for the long run. And as I was saying earlier, the kind of the level of the quality of production is constantly increasing. So not only you have to be in it for the long run, but you also have to be willing to be in it on the long run, really bringing your A game. Really, there is no... Uh, 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 half assing it there is none of that yeah yeah again you know laying it out there being straight i love it awesome awesome so yeah and I, I i'm conscious of your time just very quickly to finish off i just want to know how can we help you right now and how can people reach out and connect to you yeah yeah so i would say that the best way to to get in touch i think about helping me, the best way is just to look at what you do. Oh, sorry, look at what I do and see if um, if you and I are a good fit. If you're interested in what I do, great, get in touch. Mm. The best way to really find more about what I do, listen to my podcasts, see other products and services, and all that kind of stuff. I have my website, which is yanilunga.com, and it's spelled Y A N N I L U. N G A, so yanilunga.com. You can go there, you find some free resources. Whether you have a podcast, you've been thinking about having a podcast, or you're interested in podcasting, not so much as the host, but as a guest. Right. And then there is also the Facebook community. You mentioned it, it was uh, dubbed 
podcast community to join by Forbes. So yeah. if you're on Facebook mm. and are interested in podcasting, want to connect, we are over 2,000 podcasters from all sides of the world. And wow. what is what I love about it is that we are podcasters at different stages of our podcasting mm. journey. We have people who have been thinking about it for a year or two, which is not good. We have people who are about to launch, people who have just launched, people who have been in podcasting for years. We have uh, people who aren't podcasters, but they work in companies that help podcasters or people in the podcasting space. Mm. So if all that sounds interesting, simply go to the link I mentioned earlier, yanilunga.com, and then you add forward slash community, and you're going to find there the steps to join the community. It's completely free to join. It's called Podcast Growth Mastermind. So I would say to recap, the best way for everything, just go to yanilunga.com forward slash community. Love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. I'll put all the links below in the description so people can just click on it and just go straight to the website. So Jan, I just want to thank you for taking the time here to be with us. It's just been absolutely phenomenal. Um, time constraint restrict us otherwise i'd love to carry on this conversation we can talk about this for hours it'll be awesome but maybe we can go for a round two again sometime soon but genuinely thank you so much for being here with us my pleasure thanks talal for the fun interview really appreciate it <laughs> you're welcome my brother all right guys time to take action reach out start the conversation with yan and in the meantime hustle hard stay awesome and i'll catch you in the next one